Um, hello. Um, I'm going to do something slightly different um, <laughs> today, as always. It's clear the air. Um, I'm just going to level with you and be perfectly upfront. I really can't be bothered to edit, so I'm just pointing the camera at my computer screen. Listen, uh, there's no excuse. I used to work in post-production. I've done a ton of editing. I'm really good at colour grading and editing. I just can't be bothered anymore. Um, that's all, I apologise. I'm just doing this rough and road because for me, this is, it's more important about getting the information down than it is about the polished thing. Although, we'll see. Um, I'm going to talk about Plato's Allegorida Cave. Um, before I start diving into this madness, I just want to point out my hand injury in case you're wondering what that is. Um, I moved a tree um, and injured my hand with a metal pole, giving myself some kind of weird looking stigmata, but it's not that. I'm all perfectly fine and healed um, for the record. The only thing that healed this pain was cannabis oil, homemade. It was amazing. Put that on it and really mellowed me out as well because it was going straight into the blood. Um, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Plato's Allegorida Cave. Well, maybe it does. Let's dive in. Um, Plato's Allegorida Cave, and if you look it up on Wikipedia and you can read about it and there's hundreds of different people analysing, I want to drill in a little bit deeper into what Plato's Allegorida Cave means to me in terms of understanding... Um, some er esoteric information and hermeticism um, because it's important and just to kind of like go through a few of the basics so Plato's Allegory the Cave was written rough any, anywhere around 2500 years ago so it was 500 years BC so before Christ um, the famous great Greek um, philosopher um, as I said, like, I, I definitely encourage you to read up on Wikipedia and just look on whatever's on the internet and just see what they say, but I'm just going to take you through my version of it, which is how I, which I think is a little bit more kind of detailed. Before we dive in, I'd like, so this picture that I'm going to be using here, I'm, there's two there's two pictures that I'm going to be using to explain this, and there's a very simple reason why. Um, the first one is by, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, so apologies for any Dutch people out there. Um, the first piece is by the Dutch painter Jan. Is that Jan Sandridam? Apologies, please, please correct it in the comments and let me know how I should be pronouncing that. Um, amazing artist. Um, this particular piece that um, that Jan did is one of my favourite depictions of Plato's cave. Although it doesn't, I don't. If for me, it only it shows one perspective and it shows one angle, but it really does. When we start to drill into the details on this. Um, it does kind of like, it, 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 it covers nearly all the aspects and, I, and I'm going to do my best to point them out and then I'm going to show you, I have, so this is, this is, a, this is a, a famous um, etching and engraving done by, um, by Jan and I did my own piece to sort of help explain and enlighten the story a little bit more, which is this, which I'll come back to in a bit, in a bit and go into a bit more detail. And that's an ongoing NFT piece of art that I've been working on for quite some time and it's constantly updating and changing. Um, so what is Plato's Allegory the Cave? So very simply in the image, we can see that we have a wall here that divides society. We have, it's divided into three, into, well, in technically into four sections, but the, the first thing I want to point out the most important kind of concept of what Plato's Allegory the Cave is so Pla plato's allegory of the cave is not a physical place it is a mental and spiritual place and as, as i talk hopefully i'll be able to explain and, and unfold a bit more but just to just to explain what's happening here inside the cave we have um we have a wall that divides society behind the wall underneath a false man-made light and this is important why i'm saying that a false man-made light, but is are the men um, are the are the men who control and govern, um, who bask under this light? They understand the illusion that is being created, and what happens is the light illuminates a whole array of different imagery and puppetry. You could almost akin it to a puppet show. That the shadows from the puppet show are projected onto an adjacent wall, where 
the the the, the people trapped inside the cave despite not being chained will argue and fight over the reality now plato's allegory of the cave um says that the the slaves are uh, are born into the cave so they are born inside the cave they are unaware of what is behind the wall so they are unaware that they are even in a cave so effectively their entire existence is based on a reality of shadows Now, the shadows are not this. Everything is 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 a is a metaphor, and the shadows are literally a reflection of what society, what 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 is being portrayed by society by the men that control the light. Now, just to break it down, really, uh, a couple of other things just to explain. So, um, the 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 other key aspect to the cave, obviously. Um, there's a couple of key aspects, but I'll point out the main one is obviously the tunnel leading to outside of the cave. And in the far corner over here, Yana's included, there's three characters who are pointing up at the light and the sky who have clearly escaped the cave. Now, it's not it's not necessarily clear, although it could be indicated that those people may be from... We we don't we don't necessarily know where the, where those people come from, whether they are from this side of the wall or this side of the wall. Um, it, my interpretation and my belief, and I'll explain in great detail soon why, is that I believe these people are are people who have escaped the cave, um, not those that bask under the false light. So, Plato's the the point of the allegory of the cave is what Plato was trying to explain was that for in general, human beings accept the reality that is presented to them. And that doesn't matter what time or period or year or religion or class or race or nationality you have been born into. You are always going to believe whatever is presented to you, whether it be through the form of entertainment, through education or through religion or, dare I say, even through science. OK, so it and it, and it is again, this is not about being inside a physical cave. <laughs> this is just a metaphor. The point being is that what Plato was trying to point out to people was that Everyone is born inside of the cave. Everyone is born into a mental slave, as a mental slave. Um, and here's why, and this is where hermeticism steps in. And this isn't explained. This is what Plato doesn't go on to talk about. It's like, well, okay, well, how can that be? Okay, so, you know, you were born into this world and you can go outside, touch grass, you can stand underneath the sun, you know, what, where, where, is, the, where is the illusion? Okay, like, this doesn't seem to be accurate from, from a modern interpretation. But it is more than accurate because what Plato's cave is, it's a mental prison. And what this prison is, is that, Everything in the 3D world, everything that you believe and see and understand on the, let's just say a traditional meta, a traditional physical plane is inside this cave. And the reason why I say that is because the, the society can be broken down very simply by the characters depicted by Plato. And these characters and these positions in society have not changed for thousands of years. And if if I strongly recommend that you go and watch a video I did, which is about the descent of, um, it's about the severance of atom, but also about the kind of descent of man. I think I think it's uh, some uh, it's it's called the it's called mind versus soul. Have a look at some of my other videos anyway. But I'll quickly break it down for those that are new coming into this. Is that you have to? We have to remember that Plato existed in a time where the ancient Egyptian civilization had been forgotten and lost. There was hermeticism that was still practiced and some Egyptian magic was still revered and practiced. But in the main, at a time when Plato was alive, Egyptian magic and hermeticism was, uh, well, and certainly the, um, not hermeticism, but the Egyptian religions and, and rituals and beliefs were completely disconnected from humanity. They had lost communication and in touch with uh, you know, for an entire language barrier of the hieroglyphs, but but effectively you had all these philosophers and these 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 Greek philosophers trying to understand and sort of philosophize about reality and about God and whatnot. And you know, when we understand as well that the Romans 
the Romans pr- pretty much, well, not pretty much, the Romans did just steal and plagiarise and copy the Greek gods. So the Roman gods were a copy of the Greek gods, and the Greek gods are a copy of the Egyptian gods. And each of the Roman gods, meet, you know, several of the main ones equate to a planet, and those planets and that god equates directly to a Greek god that represents the same planet, and then the same goes for, the, for, for ancient Egypt. So philosophers at this time were really sort of trying to understand about, about this mental prison. Like, like again, like this is not a physical prison. Human beings are not trapped in a physical prison. They are trapped in a mental one. And that mental one is because they are searching for the purpose of life. They're searching for the meaning. They don't understand whether they believe in life or death. Like, sorry, life after death. No one has that concrete evidence to suggest otherwise, other than theory religion religious beliefs or you know or whatever so going back to this plato in this in this in in this in this allegory this story talks about these these people that these slaves that are born into this prison this mental prison they believe everything that is projected onto them they don't question they argue amongst one another but they have no idea that what they are actually looking at is not real. It's literally being constructed by people who understand the illusion and understand the trick of using lights and puppets to create shadows. Well, let's just look at these characters a second. The shadows here, so the, 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 the people arguing are going are gonna to sustain the puppets that are put in place above them to worship, to idol, to argue over, to defend to praise, to idolise, whatever you want to call it. The very people that are placed in, let's just call this Plato's theatre, it's a good, a good kind of example, I think. These people are the entertainers, the musicians, the politicians, the lawmakers. The very people that control the reality of these slaves. And they understand that if, and this is a big if, if this light goes out, the slaves would suddenly be plunged into darkness, but there would be a truthful light coming from the cave and the illusion would be broken and the slaves would very quickly turn on those who had controlled the light, understand the illusion that was being created and all hell would, in chaos, would break loose. It's incredibly interesting to me that the time when this allegory was written, again, 2,500 years ago, pretty much would have been at the birth of the age of Pisces. So this kind of concept of of religion and politics controlling the masses, whilst those in the privileged position are able to bask under a free light, under warmth and an illumination. And we can draw all kinds of analogies about the Illuminati and illumination and how these puppets work for the people with the the, the the people with the power and these people with the power here we have a few figures we have we with some of these people have uh you know have elements of uh, you know they're, they're in a religious attire some of them potentially look wealthy and have status and stature so these are the these are potentially you know the bankers and the elites that are generally born into this situation because they are not only aware of the light but they are in control of what happens and how the illusion is maintained well that's pretty much very much what what any kind of monarchy does it's they maintain an illusion and the illusion is that the people you know should be fighting over this reality and you know whatever So we have a bit of a break. We have like some clear defined areas of society of, of what Plato was talking about. But there is there is a couple of characters here in particular. There's one character which leans around the wall and seems to almost kind of like be checking up on the people to make sure that everyone is distracted and whatnot. Um, I would also, I think it's important to, to understand this as well, that we can draw almost a dividing line down the middle here. Those that act as puppets up on the pedestal and who are placed on a pedestal of society, who are creating the fear and the illusion that sustains 
the kind of this this like the, the reason why these slaves don't rise up and fight or do anything is because they're terrified and i'm going to zoom in a little bit um in fact do you know what? i'm going to zoom i'm going to go into my picture because i, I want to start the reason why I did my own version is so I took Jan's picture and I just kind of like I, I basically like zoomed in and like blended all of the all of the etchings so that it went into this kind of weird creepy grayscale because I wanted the faces of the of the slaves to be like haunted lost dead souls which is effectively what what has become of them because they have no access to true light the they don't even get the experience of the illuminated light this this warmth this this luciferian light um and funny enough i was i was taught i was thinking about this a lot the other day i was like fire is a luciferian element to a degree um i, I might go into another separate thing about that um the point being so in, in, in my in my depiction here we've got um we've got these tormented souls um but effectively a lot of the people that end up on the pedestal come from the come came from slavery so they have been elevated to to have access to this light and to this to this wealth and fame and fortune and this this godlike status of being idolized and worshipped by their fellow peers but they have to they have to be a part of the illusion they can't just necessarily just go off and do what they want so they're still technically a slave the problem with this particular depiction though which is where i think plato was not I don't think this this picture does it gives it any justice. It, this gives the trickery and the illusion that those who are basking in the false light n are aware of what's outside the cave. Now, I highly, highly disagree with that, and 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 I, I'm going to explain why. The cave is a mental prison. The ancient Egyptians understood that a human soul is bound to a body that is limited with the physicalities of 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 the planet. Okay, and particularly the energies of the planets, the set, the seven observable planets that control the energies on planet Earth and sustain love, life, death, etc. And all the planets represent all of those things. Seven planets, seven chakras, seven dwarfs. The narratives and the stories go on and on and on. The seven rings of Saturn, etc., etc. What I'm suggesting is that the the ancient Egyptians believed that only a pure soul and someone who connected to the true light is able to break above the firmament and break through the zodiac and i've talked to in the past about and i will do another video about in more detail about what the zodiac is but just to very quickly explain the uh, the, the the very quick story of the history of ancient of what the ancient egyptians believe and this is going back to the very early dynasties was that atom was the single creator of god atom a-t-u-m was god was atom Atom is, it, God is in everything and everything is made of God and everything is God. So everything inside and outside of the cave is God. It is all made and part of the same thing. Everything material and every element is made of atom. So the ancient Egyptians knew that a long, 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 long time ago. The symbol of atom is also a circle and a dot. Um, the point being is that atom made human souls and he also made the planet gods. And he asked the gods to gift each one of their powers to to mankind which is why we have seven chakras the seven energies within us that mirror the seven planets now the gods argued and said if we give man our and all of our energies man could and i'm using the term man because it's uh, i've said this in the past it's that's how it's written in hermetica so when i say man it's human okay man is not just male gender man is man and woman okay Put the genders to one side. I don't deal with genders in my hermeticism, okay? It's not important. It's about energy. Masculine and feminine energy is what I deal with, and that's what that's what it is. Anyway. He may he 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 the, the gods argued and said we, we can't give give man hu, humankind our energies because man will become stronger and more powerful than us and probably destroy the gods. And the history and the mythology of God man fighting gods as goes back a long time you know goes back to the greeks and beyond so in order to placate the gods atom knew that they would not give give humans these seven energies that they would need to sustain and and survive atom also knew that the gods were merciless he knew that 
And when I say he, Atom is not is again. I, I it's just it's just bad. It's just bad habit of me for repeating what I've read, and unfortunately, a lot of the lot of the scripture it is gen, gendered for 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 the reason for us to understand. But Atom is neither male or female. Atom is genderless. But so I'll try and use the word they. So Atom, they um they knew that the gods were merciless. So. They knew that they would have to come up with a with a with a with with, with some form of mechanism to to prevent mankind from ascending above the gods and destroying them. So, Atom said to the gods, "Okay, I will create the zodiac, which is an intricate star system that you will be a part of, and you will have the overall in power and control over sustaining life on Earth. The human souls will worship you and will tend to you through me." Now, I talk about the severance of Atom, which is where the gods got greedy and they severed that ties. And what I believe is that this is where monotheistic religions hold the secret information and keep the true light hidden from society. Okay? So, just to be clear, they create their own false light, their own fake religions that everyone worships, their own fake politics, their own fake currency, their fake money, their fake everything. You know, these people, we don't trade in barter in gold or natural elements really anymore. It's all, it's, all, it's, all, it's all descended, shall we say. And soon, money's now digital. It's not even tangible. Could be said for religion. Um, the, yeah, so the false light was created in the form of Saturn, the most powerful, darkest, coldest deity and the most powerful energy, the furthest from, from Earth. But that Saturn was a, was, a child, was, a, was, a, was a Luciferian deity, a fallen angel, however you want to call it, a fallen god. And those that understood the power of Saturn and understood the situation that they were in, they were all equally trapped in the cage. And the truth is that I don't believe that they can actually see outside of the cave. They can't. They are as much in the darkness as everyone else. For all intents and purposes, this light is so bright, they, they wouldn't see the light from outside of the cave either. Because all of these people were born into, even though they were born maybe not on the side of poverty, they were born on the, on the, luck, the, the, the rich side of the, of the wall, they were still born into slavery because they still worship a false light. And they use this false light to control, manipulate, and to sustain their own happiness and their own light. And again, like the cave is a mental cave, it's not a physical cave. So these rich people can still go to a private islands and live life to the fullest, drinking the finest champagne, etc. But ultimately when they die, the religion that they worship is a false G, it's a false God. Plato knew this, and that's why this story is depicted this way. Now, Plato goes on to talk about a situation where one of the slaves escapes and manages to escape past all these gatekeepers, these the people that are sustaining the illusion. That are basically these are slave masters, okay? These are bankers and and elites that are that are basically all the the one percent of society that are reaping all of the warmth and light and money and abundance off of the backs of millions of slaves that are penned in mentally into a false reality and this false reality is made up of a left and right politic political swing uh three monotheistic religions and the others the all the other religions that are um, that some are made up or invented, like Scientology and all that madness, written by a science fiction writer. I can't believe I just said that. It's insane. Um, this reality as well is also, you know, sustained by these beautiful people that these people idolise and aspire to be. They want to be under the light. They want everything. They want to. They want to experience the luxury and the privilege that all of these people have. But unbeknown to all of them that there is a true light outside. Now these people would have only learnt from their parents. And through generations and generations of wisdom and information that's handed down to them. They certainly are more privileged and they've been taught about the illusion. They've been taught. This, is, this illusion here is just occult, occult magic. That's all it is. It's just a magic show. It's just a magic trick. And... 
these people who are basking in this, they genuinely believe this. They genuinely think this is the true light. They are unaware that they are still in a mental prison because they don't see the cave walls. They genuinely, they, they, they are unable to perceive what Plato was telling them, which is about escaping the cave. So the billionaires, the elites, the rich, you can have a billion pounds, you can have hundred, you can have millions of pounds, doesn't matter. You can be a high level Freemason, you could be right up there at the top, it doesn't matter. You could be the, the most famous rap star in the world. I'm telling you this now. I'm telling you this now. The Egyptian the Egyptian gods understood this. You cannot connect with the divine light if you operate in the shadows and you operate under a false light. I'm going to repeat that again. You cannot connect to divine light if you are operating in the shadows and you are worshipping or basking under a false light. This is why that fable, it says it is easier for a rich per for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to get into the kingdom of heaven. Because in the Bible, they knew this. They knew that heaven, which awaited outside of the cave, which is a, which let's just say that this divine light is atom and it is when you're, if you're able to break above the firmament. So to break the boundaries of the zodiac. And there are layers and levels to this. You, you know, you even have like esoteric or people that can do astral projection or people that have their third eye open, etc., etc., etc. But I'm still telling you that unless you understand atom and you understand divine light, what the true high priestesses did of ancient Egypt understand, you are still operating in the seven realms of hell. And the reason why I know that is because you're still operating underneath Saturn, still operating under the, the, under the dark elements of Lucifer. And, and, and that's just obvious because so much of these people, they, they literally are thriving off of the suffering of people that, and they know the illusion. They don't speak up on it because they know if they were to whisper, shh, this is why they have that symbol. Shh, yeah? Do not speak. If they, if they whisper or usher the word of truth about this, they probably would be killed and consumed and it would be all it would be hell and you would have absolute chaos. And the reason why they are they, they know not to do that is because they know if the light goes out, they're all trapped. It's better that some of them at least it becomes survival of the fittest, right? It becomes look, you know, and it is that element of, you know, live your life, that selfish element of, you know, look, if I'm okay, that what what does it matter if what's going on, if there's if there's genocide and war and famine in other in other in other countries like everything within this side of the like this isn't just a puppet show this isn't just like you know this is this is an element of hollywood projecting um man trying to basically hollywood manifesting reality onto people here and enough where their conscious the conscious collective here sees things enough times it will come into reality for them this becomes real that's what manifestation is okay this isn't just Hollywood. This isn't just a music industry, you know, rap, you know, devilish Luciferian music with the devil horns and all the symbols that they do and yada, yada, yada. Again, projecting this false light, this false religion, this demonic thing, whatever, you, this demonic energy is the best way to describe it. Profiting from that. None of these people, you do not get access to the divine light if you are doing that. That's just a fact. They can believe it all they want. But they don't get to access it. Now, they, now <laughs> if they come to know Atom, and the only way you can reach Atom and reach a level of divine understanding, or reaching the divine light through a level of her, uh, understanding is through hermetic, hermeticism. And it is from denouncing and turning your back on this and, and walking the hardest path, which is to escape the cave yourself. It's not impossible for any one of these to, to, to leave the cave by themselves but in order to, for some of these people some of these people never will because they've committed crimes and sins that go beyond they've already broken the contract with god with atom the christian teachings that god forgives and in fact i, I, I kind of i don't know enough about the, the other religions but any religion that says about that forgives murder and the, the killing of another soul is completely made up man-made nonsense you can't do that the Egyptian, you look at the ancient Egyptians did not believe that that you would just be able to commit murder or commit a crime and then and then 
get access to the kingdom of heaven. This is why terrorists and jihadists or extremists or people who commit any murder or crime in the name of war the same goes for soldiers let me let me be clear about this the soldiers like the soldiers and the you know the people who fight for the war machines who go to these countries thinking they're a hero and killing other human souls on in the name of an oil war or in the name of the you know in the name of the queen you know if it's the knight templars on the holy crusades going back that fight doesn't matter you instantly are doing the dirty work for these people because these people know that they don't necessarily want to have their blood on their own hands. So they get the they get the slaves to do it and they trick them and manipulate them into committing crimes for them to sustain the chaos, to sustain the the darkness and the, the devilment. But they, these people aren't heroes. They're, they're, they are, they've been tricked. So no, no one coming back from a war is a hero. If, they, if they've actively killed another soul... It's not to say they're going to hell, that that part of religion is also wrong. The 12 chambers of, 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 of death, or the, or the Book of the Dead, you can read all that. Like, oh, I, have, I have grave issues with the Book of the Dead. And I only go with the hermeticism that a human soul will continue, continually reincarnate until it gets it right. And that means even if a human soul has committed horrendous crimes, they will reincarnate again and again and again. At the choice and will of Atom, if if Atom believes there is, there is, uh, there is life in that soul, if a soul becomes so demonic and it does nothing but gets to the most depraved, lowest, unforgivable elements, there's every chance that that soul will be destroyed. I do know that to be true. <laughs> um, so you definitely don't want to be you. Don't, you definitely don't want to be on this side of things. Put it that way. Up here, you're still a slave and you're a victim. Here, you're not. You're literally acting underneath the operation of the of the Luciferian light. Let me go back to, to the story though. So in Plato's cave, let me just check my time. 31 minutes. Wow, this is going on a bit. Um, I could talk about this for hours because I love it. I just find it so deeply fascinating. The story goes in Plato's cave is that one of the slaves escapes and exits the cave and barks in true light and it takes a while for them to adjust which is why the spiritual awakening the, like this this isn't a physical light as such yeah it's like the, the, this light opening is pretty much your third eye is your pineal gland which is why these people uh, are obsessed with the pine cone as symbolism and they use it in all manner of of symbolism let's just say that i don't want it i don't want this video to get too too off the wall for people but the point being is that they understand that the pineal gland is the key to atom. And if you're opening your pineal, you can still have your pineal gland and be in here, but a true, a true awakening and the, the, the spiritual path is layers. There are layers and levels to it. And I equate that to a very complicated maze of getting out the cave. So the spiritual journey that you're on, where you're constantly doing shadow work and ascending and going up and up and up and up, what you're effectively doing is working your way out the cave. Does that make sense? Anyway, one slave escapes the cave. When they get out there, they can't believe. They just can't believe the reality that they were living in. And a lot of people who go on a spiritual journey understand this. They start to see this illusion of reality. They see that the politicians are just working on the same team. These politicians are getting paid by the same people. It doesn't matter if they're left or right. It doesn't matter if they're Nazis or, or Zionists. It's all the same shit. It's all the same shit. The point being is that this person escapes and they, they see the they see the illusion and they don't want to go back. That there's just no way they no one would voluntarily want to go back into this hell, into this absolute hellscape. But being outside of the cave on your own without your fellow souls is the most lonely, painful part of the ascension process because you just can't understand why. How do you get them out? It sounds like a simple thing. So. This this person decides after a short period of time that, you know, this is an amazing place to be in this under the divine guidance and light of the true of the true light of Atom or God, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. They come back into the cave, they sneak back in and they try telling people, look, you've got to come around. This is an illusion. And no one believes them. They think they're insane. How on earth can this reality be fake? How on earth are these shadows not real? And the problem is, is because they've never seen reality. Most human beings, if you're watching this, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, no matter, like, 
at the very best, there, there is not going to be one person outside of this cave that's watching this. I'm sorry. You might think you're outside of the cave. You might think you're free. You might think you're not bound by anything. Like, you might even be financially free. You're still not outside of the cave. All you are is you're just operating in a level somewhere within this existence. It's not a bad thing. It means you, you know, you've worked your way into a position, whatever. But what I'm saying is this is a divine light. And if your, if your freedom has come at a cost of you not of you not of you being in a low vibrational state or or carrying out karmic behaviors or low vibrational actions on other souls trust me you're going to be in this prison you're going to be in this cave you're stuck in this cave it's just a, it's a false reality still so many of these puppets will still even idolize one another and worship one another even knowing the illusion and the trickery The point being is this person comes this person comes back into the cave. No one believes them. They argue and to the point where these people get so angry with this person because they're challenging their very foundations and these people have not even even prepared themselves mentally to to awaken to this situation. It's almost a deathly shock to them if they were to even believe it, and many of them don't. And many of them will stay in the cave and sadly they will die in the cave. They will literally live to their end of days not realising their entire existence has been nothing but operating in terrible circumstances, quite frankly, with very little to, to grasp onto, with no true connection to the true original God, the God that created the gods, the God that predates Judaism and Islam and Christianity, those three monotheistic religions that came after the ancient Egyptians, way after. Until we can decipher the hieroglyphs, until we've absolutely cracked that code, everything that I'm saying cannot be proved or disproved, and that is a problem. People like myself only rely on my own connection with the divine with Atom. And I'm not for one minute saying that I live out, I do live outside this cave and more often than not. I don't live a normal life. It sounds quite wacky, but I still, I, I, I am constantly traveling between these realms on a regular basis. But I, I've, I've not broken the firmament, of course, but I am so aware of this. I am on my, I believe I'm on my journey outside to, to escape the cave. But here's, here's the thing where I want to take this a step further, is that because, I, as I mentioned, the timing of this is important. So this, this concept has been around two and a half thousand years, which coincides with the entire age of Pisces. So we are due, the, the age of Pisces is all but over. It can't, the, the, the traditional fiat banking system will not sustain, the three monotheistic religions will not sustain, they will not be fit for purpose in the future. I'm sorry to say that. And this is not to besmirch religion. If religion keeps you in a, in a good state in here, that's absolutely fine. If you believe your, your God is the divine light, that's absolutely fine too. But you have to understand that the books and the scripture that you're reading and that you study and that you worship and idolize is controlled by these people. You have to accept that and you have to understand that. These people are, it, it is the Pope. It is the... The, I will say it, the Freemasons, the, the George Bushes, the Clintons, the Obamas, the Bill Gates, all of these people. It is the monarchy, the King Charles, Queen Elizabeth II. It is Sir Isaac Newton. It is all these people who have this hidden wisdom and knowledge about the truth of the reality that is there. Now, there's people who are going to watch this and go, yeah, but this is just Plato. You're talking about Plato. This has got nothing to do with our reality. Well, let me... like. Before you shut down the conspiracies or you shut this concept down, I would seriously argue, like, you're, if you believe that you're just put on this earth to just live and then die and work, and that's it, and have a family. Oh, my thing went. Here we go. If you think that that's, that's your purpose for living you're stuck in that cave, I'm sorry. Like, that's, that's, that's deeply tragic. I would strongly not strongly suggest people need to people everyone has their own free will but that's how i used to live my life until i kind of just i've always been fascinated with with history and particularly ancient egypt and egypt a little bit of egyptology and stuff like that but when you when you read things like the emerald tablet 
of Hermes and you study particularly for me things like Egyptian magic and the Hermetica when you look at these things and that they have such different concepts to to they they have such unusual uh, philosophies and and approaches to what life is and what reality is it's completely different so it's so different that modern human beings just can't get we we really struggle to get our heads around what this divine light and the the intention was of the uh, of of what the ancient egyptians were trying to pass down to us that information has been deeply severed this this information here is gatekeeper gate is 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 i can't even speak <laughs> these are the gatekeepers who hide this information from the world allowing the false light to to become the new god which is why for freemasons this 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 and in a future version of this i'm going to be putting the letter g here because this is what the false light is g for god which is not what the, the ancient egyptians didn't call god god it was atom and it's it's an important it's it's really important to get that correct i feel i i i i constantly every time i say the word like i can refer to the gods and the goddesses which is you know uh, you can't see them here but the egyptian gods and goddesses you can refer to them correctly as gods and goddesses but atom absolutely not atom was the sole creator of the of the cosmos so it's not right to call them god so what i'm saying is there's layers and levels to this and like that's that's why like just to like oh i'm always like hating on the freemasons now and i don't mean it because look everyone even these people here are a victim to a degree because they 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 were they believe the traditions that were handed down to them whether it's right or wrong it, they know it's wrong but they are still brainwashed into believing that they, they, they are trapped in plato's illusion plato pretty much manifested this by the way but that's a whole different subject he was a he was a high level magician and he manifested this 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 reality is what I personally believe. Um, we manifested this slave system. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> so let me let me do. Oh, this is a really important point to make because I want to wrap this up. Forty two minutes, I'm two two on the clock. Nice. Okay. Um, as the age of Pisces begins to crumble. Um, my next video I'm going to talk about that in in a lot more detail. I've got a really nice piece of art for that to discuss. Um, the cracks begin to appear. The cave literally begins to crumble because the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius is written in the stars. It is written as an a new age for humanity where there will be no war, no famine. Time will be destroyed, like the old father time, Saturn, is going to be is on his death on their deathbed, and that is the end of time, time chaos, etc. But the point being is that the cracks, the cracks of the, the cave begin to appear, and it becomes impossible for these people to sustain this false light because other people naturally wake up to this, this true light, so. The age of the what comes with the end of the age of Pisces is the age of Aquarius, which is an abundance of new light, and we're seeing this now. Like there are countless examples of people seeing really strange things happening. People are, uh, are having really strange abilities. We're seeing all kinds of strange things in the skies, you know, with rainbows and with clouds of smoke and lights and UFOs and all these kind of things. Don't get distracted too much that stuff because again, I highly believe a lot of that is illusions, you know. Flat earths and lizards and all. I joke about this stuff all the time in my art. Listen, it's all part of the game. It's all part of the illusion, yeah? There's nothing to fear. There's literally nothing to be scared of. None of this stuff is real. The wars, the fighting inside of the cave is real. That is that is blood. That is bloody and brutal. And, and being a slave in Plato's cave is one of the harshest things. That's why it's not fun. It's not fun to be a human soul. And 
the Egyptians believed that human souls, when they were cast back down for reincarnation, would fight, <laughs> would beg, and please don't send me back down there. Because they understood that being incarnated, again, A, you forget your past lives, but more importantly, you understand that being bound into this system is 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 really tough. But a lot of you were placed here, and you know, like myself, were placed here to discover this guided light. And some of you were placed, some of you have elevated to this point and you, the, some of these people are also beginning to see the cracks appear are beginning to see the true light and will also help a, this conscious awakening. And in future paintings, I, I wanna, I'm going to start to lighten the cave up here. I'm going to start to darken this side of thing and put the flames out and add more cracks and more light permeate. So this, this picture is going to evolve. This particular version, I believe, is available on, te on, on, um, on Tezos. It's on Object. You can find my links on my bio, my, on my Twitter, or, any, or go onto my Object account. You'll see, I think there's 10 copies of this available. It's very cheap. I am going to be doing one of one versions of the of the kind of different stages of this because I'm sort of slowly built. This is one this one piece is like uh, is a long ongoing project where I started off. I've got versions without color. I've got versions without the kind of illumination and etc. So I want to sort of try and create a version loads of different versions of the awakening. So that's kind of what this pro this piece is about. And obviously, I look. There's no doubt about it. Look, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a Picasso and an art thief. I stole this from Jan, who's a far better artist and brilliant, brilliant, brilliantly talented um, Dutch Dutch artist and painter. But I I I wanted to kind of just interpret something that just became a little bit more clearer for for a kind of well. I guess I just wanted to put a modern my modern sort of twist on the blockchain and just add some kind of hermetic discovery into this and also begin to manifest the changes which we are seeing so i've started to add some levels of illumination and light into the cave um i don't want to talk too much about my art because that's not what that's not the purpose of this but and, I, and i'm not trying to sort of shill it in that but i hate doing that kind of stuff anyone who knows me i don't promote what work well at all if anything i'm the worst person at promoting my stuff because you know for many reasons that classic artist of you know no self-belief and all that sort of stuff but um i don't make art for, for the money because that's all part of the cave stuff i'm 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 genuinely making this kind of I'm working on these sort of these things because it's all about um about the this the, the 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 spiritual awakening journey that that many of us are finding ourselves on particularly since the pandemic it's a very key kind of pivotal moment in humanity that we're in the future the the world will be defined as pre and post pandemic. Um, right now we're going through the birthing stage of the age of Aquarius, which is very painful, and there's going to be a lot of bloodshed and death and chaos, and on there's going to be a lot of blood and death for these people and these because those the 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 keepers of secrets. I can I I'm prophetic. I, I can say this as a prophecy now. There is going to be some severe judgment because these people, the, the people who are not illuminated and who are not of a holy mindset, are going to kill these people. They're going to absolutely rip them limb from limb, and it's going to be, it's going to be the the, the, the they're going to be hunted, and it's going to be horrible to watch. But ultimately, the fate of all those demonic, low vibrational beings are going to be sucked down they're going to they're going to they're going to crumble with the cave when the cave finally collapses so the the whole point of like people trying to awaken is and again it's a mental collapse yeah it's not a physical collapse it's a mental collapse these people are not mentally prepared for the for 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 the divine understanding of of the of what truly lies behind the illusion I hope this has kind of been interesting and, and and helpful. If anyone has any questions, as always, totally set, ping me some messages. I love talking about this stuff, and um, you know, I want to do some more videos like this, discussing about my about uh, kind of using my art to explain. Like all my art is based on this concept. I know my art doesn't appear like it. Like I will, I will do a lot of hateful art about these people, like the monarchy and politicians and NFT puppets, NFT royals. They're all depicted here. I've got, I've got an amazing piece for Jeff Bezos. No one gets away with it. Eventually, it might take me a couple of years, but I will eventually. If they don't, if if something, I mean, uh, you know, something chaotic doesn't happen, if the cave doesn't crumble quick and uh, before before I'm done, I'm going to be showcasing and illuminating all of these, my, all these people, all these, all these bag, all these 
karmics, all these people that that know about the illusion and are tricking people. And you know, if I get to if I if if I'm wrong on this, you know, I'll I'll hands up, put my hands up, and say yeah, yeah. But listen, I get my I get my stuff confirmed. I get my stuff. I use divination to know what I'm what I'm talking about here. And for me, this this is this is the the the, the version that I've portrayed about Plato's cave here. For me, is one that I think is it's not only relevant now, but it's it's also incredibly relevant. Um, to, to throughout history, like the you know the, this 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 illusion and trick has been used to, used to basically get people to take vaccines, to get people to wear masks, to get people to go into wars, to get people to hate Jews, to get people to hate Muslims. It's it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Um, and just finally on the religious thing, because I know people get sensitive. Like for the record, like if you're Christian, Jewish, or or Muslim, like like. And you and you believe in the divine. That's good enough for me. It doesn't matter what we call the divine. Is the divine right? I I just strongly would urge you to really kind of like go go really like if you're connecting to God, and and it's pure and you're operating from from love. That's good enough for me. It doesn't matter what the all all the scriptures are all very similar. Jesus and Horus are are identical stories. Okay, that's really important things to understand. There's so much similarities between all the scriptures. They're all kind of lent and borrowed because what's happened is this: these people, their their ancestors, really stirred the pot and mixed it all up to confuse the masses. Yeah, so it's not that we're right or wrong. We're all on the same page. We're just kind. Of, we're all kind of we're all heading in the same direction, shall I say? We're just not on the same page. That's what I mean to say. Yeah, we're all we're all believing in this. Yeah, we're all believing this. We're just we're just disagreeing about it and, and the, the semantics the, the the kind of the whose page is right doesn't matter it's like as long as we're all operating from this 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 divine level and this divine light which i i do badly most of the time or it certainly comes across as that trust me in the 3d in the 3d physical space i, I operate as, as as much as i can from my soul not from my mind and that's the final thing i have like yeah i'm look i'm gonna tie it into one of my videos this is the the best way to understand Plato's cave, and like if you want to, you really are deeply focused about escaping and you know trying to understand this. Is first of all, you and I do this terribly. You can't shout at the people, you can't convince them. There's nothing that you can say or do if they're not if they're not if their pineal gland is not is not opening, and they're not. That that is the only way you connect with with the divine. It is the seat of, it is the the is they call it the seat of the soul, the third eye, yeah, third eye chakra, whatever you want to call it, the third eye, the pineal gland. It is the it is the divine way of connecting with that divine light, yeah, because the the pineal gland. Oh, I'm going to do a whole video about the pineal gland. I'm going to do that separately. But point being is that, um, and again, I'm going off on a tangent. Check the time. Fifty two. Wow. Um, these people, no matter what you do or say, is not going to awaken them if their pineal gland is closed. If they if they don't believe and they and you know they physically have a calcified pineal gland, or they are using so much fluoride that their pineal gland is just never going to activate, or it may not. You have to accept that some of these people will die in the cave. They're going to die in a mental prism. Um, but I I firmly believe that. And if enough of us manifest and manifest through the through the, operate through soul, so yeah, sorry. So the the those trapped in the cave generally operate from their mind because they're intellectualizing their reality. They're not you. They're not reaching deeper to to something that can't be explained by science or or even scripture or you know, well, or these people. Yeah, they they're connecting through soul. So. This is your soul operation outside of here. That's why. That's why you have a divine, a divine twin soul or a divine soul. Yeah, that's the other half of your soul is already outside of there. So when you begin to spiritually awaken, your other soul, like the divine part of you, is kind of already out there. There isn't the, 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 just not to be confused with the twin flame thing, which is where you know souls are split and you have two souls in the cave. That that's a separate thing. I'm going to try and clarify that one day, but the point being that there is a there is a divine there is a divine yearning. Like your soul is, this is where your soul operates. Your soul is always, to a degree, operating in the divine. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm out. Um, this has gone on way too long, but I hope this has been in useful. And yeah, I might do some more if if I get good feedback and stuff. And if anyone wants to check me out and follow me, it's at th massacre. And if you want to chuck some pentacles my way, or if you want to, you can, like I said, you can get a copy of this art, it's thmassacre.eth. Um, and yeah, any sort of, any support and likes, shares, or 
whatever is greatly appreciated. Um, much love, peace and love out.